Hey folks, I am ready to go with a new video and I know it's been a while and I know that I've got a couple projects in the works that you're probably uh, excited to see more results on, some, some more than others. Um, the reason I am not showing you continuations of those is I'm, I'm waiting for supplies inbound right now and um, one of them, uh, two of them actually, I'm waiting on, on, on gloss coats. Uh, you know, once I start with one gloss coat, I don't like to, to switch to another one in the middle of a, of a process. Um, I know it sounds trivial, but believe me, different gloss coats can have different effects on colors and refraction. And I know it, it sounds overly technical or maybe even like I'm making it up, but try it. Switch from one gloss coat to another in the middle of, of doing a step in a model and, and you might see that the colors kind of look different. Um, but anyway, um, so I will get to those real soon, but um, hammering hard on Team Yankee. Boy, we are all in Team Yankee lately, um, me and the boys. If you've been following on this this humble little channel recently, we've got our uh, our World War III, which is basically like kind of like Team Yankee version two, I guess. Um, we had our World War III starter set. I've been working on my new Soviet army. So this is basically my my regimental commander. I've got a couple different camouflage patterns for my tanks. I've got my T-80s. I've got my T-64s. I've got my, you know, since there's just many of them, my plain Jane T-72s in just OD, well, Russian armor green. Um, and I've got some other vehicles, you know, in, you know, in, in the mix. Um, we've got some artillery, some anti-aircraft, some some personnel carriers, some scouts. We've got the BMPs going on and stuff like that. Anyway, now I'm up to the aircraft. And, uh, you know, not a lot of choices for aircraft in the game, but the starter set does come with two MI-24s. And I was just looking around and I noticed that there are actually some other companies that make aircraft in this scale, which is interesting. I, by the way, side note, I've got some Zvezda on 1 100th scale T-72s inbound also, so we can compare them to uh, the, the Team Yankee ones. But I was looking and I, you know, I, so this is, by the way, and this is very hastily done. I, I am not happy with, with the results of this, this one at all, but a very hastily done MI-24 hind for my Soviet army. Um, all, you know, brush painted. Um, I've never done a helicopter in this small scale at all. And I've made some terrible mistakes with this one. It was a good, it was a good, you know, kind of get familiar with the model for me. And the details that Battlefront puts into these, into these uh, hind kits and to practice some of my small scale detailing on aircraft because I haven't done one in a really long time. But I just really wanted to get one done and get it on the table so that I could A, play with it, you know, and I guess I could, you know, there's nothing wrong with playing one with that's just assembled or this one's just basically primed and has the under, the undercoat color so far. But I just really wanted to get this one done We'll talk more about it. Um, but as I was looking at, at different things, I stumbled upon this Ravel 1 100th scale MI-24 hind. And I said, you know, I'd, I'd love to check it out and see how it compares to the actual Team Yankee one. Unfortunately, I already assembled both of these that came in the starter kit. So I don't have an unassembled one where we can actually compare pieces to pieces, but I do still have the, the beginner's guide here with the assembly instructions so we can kind of take a look at it. Um, I mean, you know, there, there are some similarities and some huge differences. The biggest difference being that this, I mean, this is an honest to God scale model. And, you know, when it comes to detailing and, and parts count and assembly and stuff. And this is, this is a game piece. So it is much simpler um, in construction and detail. There's also some differences in what they represent which I will get into as we go. They can be built and played together on the table. 
because they will be in the same scale and match and everything. Uh, and I intend to play this. So after we're done assembling, painting and all that stuff, we're also gonna have to make ourselves a little flight stand for it because we don't have, we could buy one, sure, but you know, we could also be creative and we can make one. And I have some of the materials already on hand. I have acrylic rod for some other projects, you know, just here. And this rod happens to be about the same thickness as the flight stand that they already use. So using some spare parts that already come in the starter kit with the other flight bases, we'll go ahead and we'll make ourselves a flight base with that acrylic rod and what we have lying around here. Let's get into this kit though. Let's take a look at the back, by the way. Um, so we've got some nice shots here. So the box tells us it's an MI-24D hind. Now, in Team Yankee, they don't really tell us which version of the hind it is, but looking at the weapons options, looking at some of the details on the helicopter, we can sort of piece together that what Team Yankee gives us is really closest to an MI-24V Victor. Closest, not exactly. There's there's some things missing, like for example, the, the strap-on uh, flare launcher that would go under the tail boom and such. Um, you know, the MI-24D was kind of, sort of, I'm saying kind of because, you know, Russians, the Soviets, even with their own designation system, um, not every piece of equipment matched exactly, you know, as, as things were upgraded throughout their big empire um, and some things lacked certain pieces of equipment or whatever. But, I mean, the, the MI-24D was the, the first real, like, when we think of the hind, that was that was the hind that we think of, that the scary flying tank of a helicopter. There were other versions, of course, that, you know, that flew because they had to get to the D to get there. But um, when you see a hind when with this configuration, the, the front, back, the tandem um, cockpits, the um, Mujahideen being terrified by it in Afghanistan, you know, the just the whole mythology of, of that flying tanks, very fast, by the way, helicopter. We're generally talking about an MI-24D, which entered service around 1973. The original, you know, the original um, MI-24A, the original Hind model, uh, entered service 1972, and then the V model, which is almost identical to the MI-24D, uh, entered 1976. And uh, one of the ways that, you know, I'm, I'm calling this a V, is the introduction of um, the AT-6 missiles. Um, but I'm not gonna get, and, and some other, you know, this little external guy right there, up there, um, but we're not gonna get too far into it. Um, but this guy carrying the, the AT-2s, the swatters over there, um, older rocket pods, um, and, you know, not having what we would refer to as a disco ball, um, attachment under the rotor that makes this a D, an older model. Um, and then there's a host of other, you know, like I said, this should this should have the strap-on flare launchers under the boom. Um, and um, you know, after after the V, then they some of the the later models had a um, bolt-on twin-barreled 23 millimeter cannon on the side of the fuselage rather than the uh, little rotary cannon under the nose but we're 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 not going to go delve into it too deeply so looking at the parts that come in this of course this is a model kit so you're going to get panel lines very nicely recessed panel lines you're going to get a whole lot more parts than you're going to get in the battlefront kit take a look at the total number of parts in the assembly guide here you uh you have more parts on one sprue here uh, on the Ravel sprue than you do in all of the assembly pieces uh, here. But assembly is uh, generally similar. You've got your two fuselage halves, you've got your stub wings, uh, you've got your underwing ordnance, tail rotor, main rotor. Main rotor is a little bit more complicated to put together. You have to actually build the under the uh, anti-tank missiles. And again, they are AT-2 swatters, not 
the spirals of the uh, the newer version. One of the biggest differences is though you get a little you get a small tiny cockpit in there, and you get clear canopies as opposed to just you know what Battlefront gives you, which is solid plastic that you can paint up. Um, and then you know yeah, there's a number of different ways people do this. The, the Battlefront method is just to paint it black. Um, you know, I saw a really funny video as a side note where somebody, uh, and I'm not calling anybody out, everybody's got different skill levels, of course, but somebody said they had a real cool hack or a trick to make your helicopter look more realistic because they had just the black painted, where uh, he figured out that if you painted a, a, a clear gloss over it, it looked more realistic like glass. And I was like, really, dude? You, you personally invented painting things glossy to look to look like glass? Welcome to modeling. Um, it was kind of it was kind of humorous to me. I went for the I went for the uh, blue with a little bit of a highlight color myself um, doing that. So, um, and I'll talk about the colors that I used a little bit later on. Um, but so it you know it looks like a, again it's a it's a more it's more of a scale model kit. Lots more construction internally. There's not a lot of detail. Because there's not a lot that you're going to actually see. I'm looking for these. These are the seats. I mean, take a look at those seats. Oh, and they got those terrible ejector pin marks right in the middle of the seats. Not that you're going to see much in there. I mean, there's not even, there's probably a stick that maybe a tiny control column you put in there. Little instrument panel. You're not, like I said, you're not going to see much. And, you know, just to make it match the other helicopters, someone might be tempted to even just paint over the the transparency and make it look like that it looks like if you take a look at the canopies here it looks like you actually get a better canopy detail on the battlefront helicopters if you if you take a look at the the canopy framing and everything on battlefronts versus and and shape and everything versus what you get with the Ravel it looks like they, they just look like bubbles Oops, oh well. But with the Battlefront, you get that nice flat plate front on the canopy, which is accurate for a hind, because um, you get, like, the front windscreen on the hind is armored glass, and these just look very not pronounced, not distinct at all. Um, I, I think that the, the Battlefront version is actually more of an accurate shape than the Ravel model kit, which is very interesting. But overall, beside, you know, aside from that, you get a, uh, uh, you know, expectedly, you get a lot more detail out of the Ravel kit than you do the Battlefront kit. Uh, something else I just thought of too, if we're gonna build a flight stand for it, we need to engineer some kind of way to attach the helicopter to it. And what I'm thinking of, here's leftovers from the starter kit itself We've used all the the large, um, you know, stands and all the the clear bases because we've got the two um, frog foot, frog feet, frog foots, and we've got the two hinds. But we have these left over. So what I'm actually thinking to attach is we take the acrylic rod, which went where I don't know what I did with it, um, but taking one of these little collars and mounting it internally inside the body of the hind and drilling the small hole and there's the rod um, and that way we can mount it up in similar to the way that Battlefront does this maybe capping it off a of magnet I don't know but you know this is where my mind is going already to to make a flight stand for it we'll handle all of that during construction though let's take a look at the instructions uh, for the kit so we got a nice full color picture of the assembled uh, helicopter here this is an Afghanistan scheme with the clover camouflage um, it's nice a lot of people like it uh, not my favorite one really nice full color instructions from Ravel though in multiple languages very nice parts diagram Let's you know exactly what you've got. Decals, 
do look a little bit thick. I wonder, are these are these the reinforcing strips for the for the rotors? Maybe. Yeah, they would fit around. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Looks like we've got great decals for the instruments and control panels inside the cockpit, which makes it really nice. So we don't have to paint those tiny little details. Um, good amount of stenciling too for you know an aircraft this size. Um, details that we wouldn't have on the battlefront stuff, which is cool. Um, and then the standard, uh, just external stuff. Red numbers, which is nice too, because those yellow numbers that Battlefront gives you just, I don't know, they just sort of fade away into the paint, you know. But nice looking decals. Ravel decals, these new Ravel Germany ones are, are pretty good. Um, there are better ones out there, but they're pretty good. Awesome actual color painting instructions to tell you, like, I mean, when I say color painting instructions, like, they tell you what color to paint stuff, which is pretty nice. So if we decide to leave the transparent parts transparent, that works out awesome. Uh, if we decide to just paint over the transparent parts to make them match the work that we've already done here, that's just a moot point. We might, um, yeah, we might leave it transparent. I mean, if we've got the decals and we've got all these, I mean, these instructions are very clear, very easy to follow. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll leave it transparent. Um, I don't know, but it doesn't look like a complicated um, assembly at all. You know, I am a little concerned with masking off these little teeny tiny parts, not these little tiny tiny parts, but you know, there's no, there's no external texture for the rails on this at all. Well, a little tiny bit. Um, you know what? It'll be a labor of love. But very, very clear instructions. I mean, they looking, if you just look at it, it looks complicated. But when you actually in detail, like look at each of the, these steps, it's a very simple build process. Um, the Battlefront models, I, I found out that if you want them to not sit on the tail a little bit, you gotta put just a little bit of weight up front. This one I did not, and it sits pretty nice on the wheels, but if I take the rotor off, it tends to want to sit on the tail. The rotor helps, but on the stand, it still has a tendency to go backwards. That's why with this one, I put a little bit of weight in the nose so it sits flat. I don't know if this is gonna require the same kind of thing. I don't I don't think it I saw it requiring weight. It doesn't say I don't see a good place to put any nose weight in if we're gonna do transparent canopy anyway. Um, we can again that's stuff we can work on stuff we can find. Nice full color Four view paint scheme of clover flage. Really nice and really nice instructions. Uh, nicely done. Um, it looks like it's going to be a really interesting little kit to build.